Hello everyone, this is the Nameless One. Today we are going to go over the episode 47 and 48 highlights for Peacemakers of Equestria. Before we do though, I would like to say that if you enjoy what we are doing and would like to support the channel, then check out my reward tiers at patreon.com slash the Nameless One, link in the description. And thank you to those that already have. Without further ado, let's begin. The first clip is of the fateful moment that Sawtooth unwittingly makes the sacrifice that transforms him into a lich. Roll clip. Uh, Sawtooth um, touches the Amulet of Avarice against the um, obelisk thing. So you feel a sudden surge of wild and overpowering magic. Do you resist? Oh. Um, ah, yes. Roll a constitution saving throw. Alright, oh gosh. Alright, here we go. I brought this upon myself. Ooh! You fail. Ooh, so, what happened? Paige, from your point of view, he is curled up on the floor in agony. The obelisk turns to dust as he, like, rides around on the floor in pain. I am assuming I <laughs> see some visual changes to the toot. <laughs> He's looking a bit gaunt, despite being, you know, a bug. He is also uh, oh, okay. Uh, his eyes are also kind of glowing funny. What did you do? <laughs> he just became a lich. I, I poked the sawtooth. Uh, what happened when you touch the... Is this normal when you touch the amulet against things? Heck if I know. I All I can tell you is that I feel more alive than ever, but also more dead than ever, so... It's a funny combination. Okay. Guess what? He looks very undead and very terrifying right now. He can't oh, enter the church. Wait a second. Can my changeling form sort of... Oh, no. can I enter the church? So your appearance has grotesquely transformed. Your skin has become rotten and pale. Great. While your figure has become gaunt and hunched, radiating a ga ghastly aura. So You can suppress this form and Ooh. present the appearance of your... We'll, original we'll form. say changeling you once yes. were yes however absolutely. this is taxing and requires concentration moments of stress are likely to reveal your true nature this next clip is of solar scripture dream walking into sawtooth's dream roll clip who do you step into next i think this is when i walk into sawtooth's all right so um speaking of flashbacks in Sawtooth's dream is the throne room of the Crystal Castle, but when it was commanded by the Nightmare Guard Pinkie Pie, when she was hosting her deadly party. You see the peacemakers of the past surrounding her in combat, but there's two Sawtooths in the room. One appearing youthful, fighting in the throes of battle, and the other appearing as you recognize him today, all decrepit, looking on, disconnected from the scene. The bystander Sawtooth watches attentively, but shows no emotion. As the battle progresses, you see youth youthful Sawtooth of the past pull out his amulet and prepare his lightning bolt spell. He takes aim at Pinky, and from the amulet blasts an enormous ray of electricity so wide it encapsulates one of the peacemakers, a dragon that was standing just too close. Both the dragon and Nightmare Pinky evaporate into thin air. The past Sawtooth, you see his face take on a an expression of pure shock, but the onlooker, the old decrepit Sawtooth, only seems frustrated, peeved. He sneers at his past self, criticizingly. So that's what happened to Pinkie Pie. He senses a presence behind him and turns to see Paige. Huh. This this is different. I've I've had this dream a thousand times, but you've never been in it. He looks to himself. He looks pensively and says, uh. Didn't Solar Scripture join the Peacemakers after this battle? I joined before the dungeon? This before? Yeah, it was. Um, shortly before. This is where Durak died. Hmm. You heard about that incident, right? They keep bringing it up. I've heard bits and pieces, but I do not recognize him as much as the rest of the party. Well, now you've, now you've seen him. Uh, he, he was a Peacemaker un until my careless mistake killed him and Cost us one of our fighters. Honestly, I've done more harm than good for the group at this point, and I don't know if I can ever fix that. 
or balance the scales in any way, but I guess I'll try my best. You using an artifact without fully understanding what it does? This was the first time I used it. Mm. I'd had it for a while, but never used its full potential. I had recently absorbed the magic from a previous adversary, but I didn't realize just how powerful it was. This was a, a bit of a rude awakening. I know you've used it a few times in my presence. No, uh, the pylon was the first time I saw you use it to gather energy. Something seems different this time. Something stronger, which um, could be really bad. I've had this dream so many times. I used to, I used to call out to myself to try to stop it, but it always ends the same way. But not quite. Sometimes it ends worse, especially now with this new power. I, I worry more and more that things could end much, much worse. As if on cue, um, the dream starts to shift. The jagged crystal walls begin to warp and blur. The room spinning as wooden features come into form. Books fly into scattered bookshelves as a library is constructed around them. They watch as some peacemakers disappear and new ones join. Solar sees herself take form in the library. Professor Beholden also fades into existence right in front of them. This you should recognize. I remember this. You saw me finish this guy off with no collateral damage, but I feel like I got lucky. It could have mm -hmm. gotten much worse. At this point, um, you see what happened happen again, where Sawtooth pulls out his amulet and casts the fire spell. The laser beams incinerate the beholder, but this time, it's different. Before the peacemakers have the chance to breathe after their battle, magic circles form and glow around Quillian, around Ballfire, Solar, Cloud, around Leo, Lena, and Staghorn. Sawtooth in the vision is scrambling, trying to get a hold of his amulet, fidgeting helplessly in a panic, but it's far beyond his control. Dream Sawtooth, and the, the old decrepit Sawtooth looking on, and Paige, they watch as the amulet triggers the magic circles, and all of the peacemakers, save for Sawtooth, disintegrate into dust in front of them. Sawtooth is left alone in the library, looking furious as the souls of his party flow into his amulet. Something like this could easily have happened, and it could happen soon, if I'm not careful. I'm more powerful than ever, but... I gotta make sure that I'm only dangerous to the right people, to the people we're trying to stop. And not to our friends, not to Durak, not to you. You cast the spell with the thought that this could happen? I had to do it. You have to understand that um, Leo was gone. I watched Leo disappear, and I saw Quillian was in stone. I had to end it. And you wouldn't even do anything to stop him. I... I didn't think we'd make it out alive. It was a chance I had to take. Remember, I was charmed during that fight. And it was only a matter of time before he charmed everyone else. I didn't see any other alternative. Desperate times, I guess. You watch Sawtooth, the dream Sawtooth, alone in the library, talking aloud to himself um, about what he could have done better like if he had shifted power in a separate direction or altered the spell in some way. Thinking aloud trying to redo the calculations and improve his future use of the magic. I hope you figure this out before anything else happens. Me so too. walk out of your dream. Our final clip is of Sawtooth asking Shadowfire and Gaster about immortality. Roll clip. You know, I, I never used to understand the whole blood replacement thing, but these past few days, I think I get it now. This is... This is pretty good stuff. But I, I turn to um, uh, Shadowfire, and I'm like, but I haven't been hungry in days. Is this, like, is something wrong with me? Like, what's happening? I'm super confused. Shadowfire, who's currently face first in a uh, Hellfire Chicken, looks up at you and after a moment swallows and says, usually I would have the same issue. Lately, though, I've found myself needing more and more food. More than likely... There is something else that sustains you. I'm a changeling, so there's the, the love thing, but like, at the same time, I haven't been feeling any of that recently either. No offense to anyone here. 
Gaster, who's sitting next to a shadow fire on the other side, comments, if, w if my theories are correct, you actually sustain yourself off of souls. Whose souls? He, uh, he shrugs and says, I would assume the souls of those you slay. Like Professor Beholden. His, but wait. He, he says his would be a, a more powerful one that would sustain you for longer, but yes. Oh. So if I stop slaying people, which eventually I plan on, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for... Do I just... Do I have to keep killing people to survive? Is that basically what this is? Gaster shrugs and says, If, like I said, if my theory is correct, you would need souls to sustain yourself. However, as no one else here, aside my, from myself, generally needs them, building up a stock while you are here is possible. Okay. However, it is not a thing that will last for however long you survive. Wait, what do you mean? Gaster rubs a hoof over the bridge of his snout and says, If what I am guessing is correct, you have become what is known as a lich. Something not too dissimilar from myself. The undeath kind of gives it away. He gestures at you in your general direction. And he continues saying, When it comes to things like that, they, we tend to have lifespans with no end unless somebody puts an end to it. Oh, gosh. Like, immortality? Like Celestia and Luna? Yes, or not. Oh, my gosh. But, like, it's not quite the same as, as before, though, because, you know, everything's sort of, like, blah. Everything sort of feels like, ugh. I don't know. It's not, it's, like, gray, sort of. Like, is that just a temporary thing that I'm adjusting to? Like, Gaster, you said you're, um... Uh, undead too, right? So is it kind of like, what's, is that the new norm or something? He chuckles dryly and nods saying, you get used to it eventually. I'd imagine that at one point that I did as well. On one hand, I I feel um, determined to keep going on as I am because of the advantages it could pose against Soul Tenebris. But on the other hand, I, I still feel like I want to reverse this and go back to my old life as a, you know, a changeling. Is that possible? He shrugs and says it depends on the exact mechanism of the spell that transformed you. In some cases, it takes literal acts from deities. In others, it's as simple as a resurrection. However, you would die of any wounds that you had sustained beforehand if that were the case. I'll try not to sustain any wounds then, but, um, I mean, everything is the same in that, like, I'm still fighting for Equestria, but I don't really feel the need to. I, I feel, I think the need to. Like, I know it's the right thing to do, but, like, I don't have that, that passion, the, the, the feeling that I'm fighting for my home. And I, I kind of, I kind of miss that. But I, I, I'm not going to give up what I have, because it could be really useful for Soul Tenbris, I think. But I really don't like, I, I don't like what's happening at the same time. I feel like I'm losing a part of me. Uh, Shadowfire gives a snort and says, If I were you, I would hold on to what you have left with everything you have. Lose and it, and you'll lose yourself. How do, how do I do that? He shrugs and says, It's different for everyone. He, he points to Gaster and says, He buries himself in his studies and magic. And I just look for places, peaceful, quiet ones, to stay. His tone goes a lot more sorrowful, and you can see, like, a sadness in his eyes as he says this. And, he, and then he points to uh, your companions and says, Do what you can to protect them. If you don't, and you lose them, you will lose part of yourself. It's not easy to make friends as an immortal. And the ones that you do have... They're all gone all too soon. Tooth, um, sort of, is sort of thinking to himself, not knowing how to reply. And after a few moments, says, I'll keep that in mind. Before uh, both of them stand up, uh, Shadowfire looks at you and says, I may not be much for this whole friend thing. In fact, I can count. And he looks at a hoof and says, I would say on one hand, but, um, 
I can only say that I have very few friends. However, if you need someone to talk to for the things that they cannot understand, he points to Gaster. He and I have been dealing with this for... He looks at Gaster and Gaster says, Don't ask me. It's... I'm not thinking about how old I am right now. <laughs> and he shrugs and says, A long time. We may be oh. able to answer some of your questions. In, in that case, I do have one thought. Um, one, one question, one more question. Um, the other day fighting the professor when I was off, um, at the pylon and that's sort of what caused all this, but the energy that just had me on the floor, just like, is that something that I should, should I do that again and get more power or is it not worth it? I'm not sure. They look at each other and Gaster says, that is not a choice we can make for you. It is one that you'll have to make for yourself. No matter what you do, there will be consequences. It's just a question of which ones you are prepared to take. Understand. And with that, they uh, go looking for Lena. And that's all we have time for today. I would like to say a big thank you to Frozen Knights for the intro, outro, and background music. Also, a special thanks to my priest-tier patrons. Sawtooth Waves, Ellis Xander, Gilded Page, Cameo Shadowness, and Haxros. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our streams and uploads. Everyone have a great day, and drink water.